Hey there! In this video, we will show you some amazing World War II artifacts and tell you the story of their discovery. Let's cut right to the chase! A Collector's Cache an interesting story happened to two hunters in Ukraine in 2019. One beautiful, sunny day, two friends went hunting in the woods. They decided to shoot some rabbits for the day off. Unexpectedly, at the edge of the forest, the hunters found a pile of discarded equipment and a few other things. Probably someone decided to get rid of the junk in their old house, or maybe some relatives inherited their grandfather's house near the forest and decided to get rid of all the rubbish. Out of curiosity, the men decided to investigate this pile. While sorting through the rubble, they saw two suitcases, one of which contained a collection of German bayonet knives from the Third Reich. All the artifacts were in perfect condition, there was only a small amount of moisture mold on the metal. It was probably the hiding place of a collector, who had been collecting etched weapons, and stupid relatives just threw them away, making a dump right in the forest clearing. A cache of revolvers in Russia, in the city of Astrohan, while demolishing an illegally built garage, a municipal employee found an old newspaper dated 1918, in which two revolvers and ammunition were wrapped. One of the revolvers turned out to be a gallant Velodog. This is a Belgian pocket revolver with a concealed trigger, designed by gunsmith Charles Francois in 1894. The gun was designed to protect cyclists from dogs, hence the name Velodog. The gallant Velodog revolver used weak cartridges with long cases, so it wasn't a combat weapon, although it was popular with women as a self-defense weapon. It was in production up to the outbreak of the First World War. The second weapon was the Nagan system revolver, which was widely used in the Russian Empire and later in the Soviet Union. It was produced in a number of enterprises of the Soviet Union up to the year 1945. About two million pieces were made. The model that was found is interesting, since it's one of the very first editions and it's now a collection item. Return of a pilot In the Tosnesky district of the Leningrad region, members of a search party took out the completely preserved remains of a Soviet 22-year-old pilot Sergei Fadeev from a swamp near the village of Pishanka. The pilot went missing 77 years ago. His plane was shut down near Leningrad. The fighter, together with the pilot, fell into the swamp, where Fadeev's body was literally embalmed. Fighter pilot Sergei Fadeev took off on March 20, 1943, on an American-made P-40 Tomahawk aircraft. He accompanied the Al-2 attack aircraft. They attacked enemy positions near the village of Ulyanka. The operation was successful, but suddenly two German fighters appeared. In the air battle, both Soviet planes were shut down. The first pilot escaped by parachute and the second one, Sergei Fadeev, crashed into the swamp alone with a plane. Fadeev's fighter was pierced with bullets and shells from the tail to the engine. This conclusion was made by the traces of holes on the fragments found. One of the shells exploded in the cockpit, and the pilot was killed by shrapnel in the air. Then the aircraft caught fire and went into a dive. The crash site was discovered accidentally during the search operations. The identity of the pilot was established by the numbers on the aircraft fuselage. When the body was taken out, the searchers were amazed at the condition of the remains. He looked as if an airplane had just crashed. The searchers said that the body was embalmed after lying in the aircraft oil and fuel in the absence of oxygen. They also found the personal belongings. 
a medallion was lying in a breeches pocket, probably with a picture of a pilot's beloved one. Unfortunately, the image hadn't survived. There also was a pocket address book with his friend's contacts and tobacco wrapped in newspaper in the pocket of the fly suit. The date was preserved on a newspaper fragment, March 18, 1943. With the help of volunteers, Fadea's relatives were found in a week, children of his brother who also fought on the fronts during the war. They live in Nizhny Novgorod, the homeland of Sergei Fadeev. Heroic pilot Fadeev was buried at the memorial cemetery in his homeland. A parcel with guns. Three well-preserved German World War II machine guns were found in a parcel sent from Latvia by employees of the Polish State Tax Administration. The package was supposed to be delivered to the UK. The MG-34 machine guns were delivered by a courier. The parcel was at the courier's office when the customs officers found it. The package aroused interest because there was no information in the documents declaring its contents. After examining the weapons, it turned out that the machine guns were dug up at the World War II battlefield and are no longer suitable for shooting, but can only be used as museum exhibits. The IL-2 Flying Tank Recovery in the Novgorod region, a World War II stormtrooper was discovered at the bottom of Ilmen Lake. This is the first such find for the last 20 years. The searchers hope to establish the pilots' names and then transfer the plane to the local history museum. At the beginning of the operation, the depth of 2.5 meters didn't allow to take the plane off the bottom. The lake's bottom is full of silt, it's the world's best preservative. Even Novgorod longships can be found here fully intact, but the searchers were interested in the plane found. It was possible to determine that this was an IL-2 attack aircraft, but this took a lot of divers' work. It took seven days to trim and remove the fishing nets and steel cables from the fuselage. But what happened then made the expedition members to remember the Sea King himself more often. First, the storm damaged the pontoon slings, the rise was postponed and the barge with a crane was called for. They hooked the plane, but it had laid underwater for too long, and silt filled all the cavities and made the plane way too heavy. Isle 2 broke into two and returned to the bottom of the lake. On the first attempt, only the nose part with the engine was recovered, but this gave a great opportunity to identify a combat vehicle by its serial number. Then it was the cap's turn. This time the slings failed. And for the third time, it was possible to extract the cabin with the wing. This moment was especially expected. Everybody was waiting to find out whether the pilot was in the cockpit at the time of the fall since the plane turned over during the fall and the pilot might not have an opportunity to get out of the cockpit. The lantern was torn off and the cabin was empty. This is the beginning of the story. The aircraft was probably shot down at the beginning of the war. It was riddled with bullets. There were no bombs in the suspensions, so we can infer that it bombed the enemy and was shot down by a direct hit from an anti-aircraft gun. This is evidenced by the hole from a shell hit on the hood. The pilot probably ejected. There was a thorough work with the military archives, which could put everything in its place in the combat chronicle of the IL-2 attack aircraft. But the researchers were in for another unpleasant surprise. It turned out that the plane was assembled from the several vehicles, most likely damaged in air battles. Several serial numbers were found on the fuselage and engine, all from different attack aircraft. So the main work on the search for the name of the pilots is still ahead. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the channel not to miss new videos.